Today we're going to be looking at NAT. NAT stands for Network Address Translation and in the 1990s they said that IP version 4 addresses were going to be depleted so they came up with a strategy to do NAT Network Address Translation and there's a few flavours but the one that we're going to be looking at today is going to be a static NAT which is a one-to-one -one mapping. Now Network Address Translation along with saving IP addresses also is a security prevention tool. Let's say that we had the topology that we've been working with and our DMZ and our inside and we, we have a host. So we've got some services that are running on our DMZ router that the hosts from the outside need to access, but we don't want to expose our internal network topology and IP addressing schema to the outside network. This would be a good use case for NAT where we can have the outside network ping an address and that be translated into our real address or vice versa. We have a real address which is translated to address on the outside network subnet. So it looks like to any host from the outside that they're accessing an address which isn't actually part of our internal infrastructure. And the best way to show that, so I will be going over three types of that, probably like port address translation and dynamic NAT, but the one that we're going to be looking at today is static NAT. So what I will do first, I will do a NAT translation from our DMZ to the inside network, which will use the CLI firewall. And then I will do a NAT translation from our outside network to the DMZ using the, the GUI, the ASDN. So let's jump on that. I haven't got any of these open. So first what I will do, I will open up the DMZ, CLI and inside devices. Now we should still have routing in place. However, we're going from a lower security level to a higher security level. So I'm not expecting the DMZ to be able to ping the inside interface. Ping 192.168.10.2. No, it isn't able to. So the first step that I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to create an access list. And this access list is going to allow ICMP from our DMZ to our inside interface. So if I say access list DMZ to inside extended, we're going to access list DMZ ins inside extended. Okay, this is because I'm doing this on the DMZ router, which isn't going to help us at all. I need to be doing this on the CLI firewall. So access list DMZ to inside, extended. We're going to pimit ICMP from anywhere, going to host 192.168.10.2. And then we're going to apply it on our DMZ. So incoming from the DMZ, so access group, DMZ to inside, coming in, interface, DMZ. That should allow us to now be able to ping from our DMZ to the inside interface. So if I say do ping 192.168.10.2, we have reachability, but this is now exposing our inside IP address to our DMZ router, which I don't want. So the next part is to do our NAT. Now, previously we were using object groups and an object group is just when you gather a set of objects into a group yeah so i only want one object which is um, the ip address of our inside router so i will say object now we know that we use network for ip addresses subnets and network so i say object network and i will call it inside router we're going to name the name of the host so it's 192.168 10.2 that's the real address now what we're going to do is we're going to nat that so if i say nat and i do a question mark here it says open the parentheses so we're going to open up the parentheses and it says our internal interface name our internal interface name is inside and our external interface name which is coming in from which is dmz let's close that and as i said it's just a static one-to-one -one mapping guys I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. 
and we're going to put the IP address that we want it to be spoofed as, pretend as, and I will put it on the same network as the DMZ subnet. So I'll say 10.1.1.150. All right. So from the DMZ, if we were now to try and ping the 192.168.10.2 network, you can see that it's no longer reachable. However, if we were to do ping 10.1.1.150, let's say repeat 10, the first one will be an ARP and it is successful. And if we were to jump back onto our DMZ firewall, from here we say show xlate, which is the show NAT translations, we can see that the inside network of 192.168.10.2 has been translated incoming from the DMZ to 10.1.1.150. Superb, let's just save that configuration. So looking back at our diagram now, we can see that our DMZ can actually get access to our host, whatever services, let's say it was a web server, it will be able to get web server access, but it wouldn't be able to ping our internal network IP address of 192.168.10.2. It would have to ping 10.1.1.150. Superb. Let's do that exact same thing, except this time we're going to do it using the DMZ. So I will now open up our outside router the dmz is already open and i will open up our asdm let's continue here i'm going to accept that risk all right let's log in with our admin and our password all right we're on our asdm so from our outside router are we able to ping our DMZ? I wouldn't have thought so because it's a lower security level interface going to a higher security interface. So if I say ping 10.1.2.2, which is our DMZ router's IP address, we are unable to ping that. So the first thing that we need to do to enable the ping is to create an access list. So to do that, we're going to configuration, we go down to firewall, and we go to access rules. And um, we're going to add an access rule, which is here. Now, we want it coming in on our outside interface. So outside, we're going to permit it from any source and it's going to go to that one host, which is 10.1.2.2. And we're only gonna allow ping, so ICMP. We say okay there. I think that should actually be enough, let's see. So access, let me actually cancel that because I don't like that name. And to change the name of any access list on the ASDM, let's just double click here and you see where it says interface name and it says ACL name, outside access in. No, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna make it outside to DMZ. I like that name better. Okay, let's apply that. And you can see access list outside access in has been renamed to outside to DMZ. Now we might get an error here because we haven't actually got an access list called outside to access in. But even though the error is going to come up, it should still be applied. Yeah, let's just close that. It's still applying that configuration. So if I now go onto our outside router and try this ping now, we can see that the ping is successful. So part one is successful. Now the next part is to do our NAT rule. And the static NAT on the ASDM is a bit funny, or I find it a bit funny, other people might find it okay. Now, I would have thought we'd go into NAT rules to do this. If I can remember, it's not NAT rules though. I need to add a network object. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into our rule that we've just created. And let's just say edit here. I think I need to look in this drop down box. Okay, yeah. And let me, do I add here? Yes, so I'll press add, then I'm going to go to network object. And the name is going to be DMZ router. It's going to be a type host. IP address is going to be 10.1.2.2. Let's go into our NAT and see what we've got here. Expand that. We're going to add automatic address translation rules and we're going to put the IP address. Now I'm going to put it on the same subnet as the outside. So I'm going to say 
.12.200. I'm also going to look at our advanced rules here. I'm going to say our source interface is the DMZ, where it's being translated from, which is a bit unintuitive, but and our destination address is outside. I think that should be it. Let's say OK and see what is going to be sent to our command line. All right, let's apply that. So we've got an object network of DMZ router, hosted 10.1.2.2, NAT DMZ to outside, static 209.10.12200. Looks perfect to me. So we'll send that and then we'll see if we can ping from our outside router, which we cannot, to 10.1.2.2. Let's just stop that. And to stop that, I do Control Shift 6. And so let's try and ping to the IP address that we natted it to. So ping 209.10.12.200, repeat 10. And that is perfect. The last thing is with, I would actually do the xlate, but I've never actually done xlating from the ASDM actually, now come to think of it. All right, let's just open up the command line on the ASDM and do the xlate for that. Show xlate. And we can see NAT from the DMZ, which is 10.1.2.2. If it's coming from the outside, it's translated to 209.10.12.200. Right, that's it for static NAT. I will see you in the next one.